Thank you. Good morning. Okay. So, well, okay. First of all, I think you recognize this car. 120 years ago, you know where we, have, we were, and you know where we are today. Today, I'm describing you what will be the new trend, the new challenges for automotive microcontrollers. Of course, my name is Giuseppe Di Giore, and I am Automotive MC Microcontroller Unit Application Manager in ST Microelectronics, of course. So, what is the main trend in automotive today? The main trend is electrification and digital experience. In electrification, electrification is bringing new applications. Traction inverter, onboard charger, DC-DC power converter, battery management. So these are the new applications that the microcontrollers, the, well, the company and the microcontrollers then should address. And there is the new digital experience. There is a new architecture in the car, new end-to-end -end architecture. There is a, the car architecture is moving from domain, zone, controller. And there is a new trend in software, which is the service-oriented architecture, service-oriented gateway, more communication. And, of course, there is ADAS and connectivity. These are the new trends. So ST Microelectronics is working in order to address these new trends with, with a set of microcontrollers. Today, ST Microelectronics is working on SPC5. We are addressing the traditional architecture, the, the, the architecture of the car available today on the market with the PowerPC architecture. We are designing, and it is already on the market, a new family that is called the Stellar, and this Stellar is going to address these new, new trends and new features required for, for automotive microcontrollers. The domain zone controller can be addressed with this new family that is called the Stellar. Stellar is the new family. And for the electrification, there is a, a dedicated dedicated microcontrollers specific for actuation and sensor management. So the new vehicle architecture is moving from domain controller to zone controller. In the zone controller, each zone is, there is a dedicated microcontroller that is able to control all the sensors, all the applications, which are part of the, of the zone. And there is a central computer. Well, this is very schematic, a very simplified architecture. But anyway, the trend is this. So the central unit is responsible to coordinate the various zone, and each zone can communicate with the re with the rest of the car using an Ethernet backbone. Ethernet backbone, in this case, should be fast. So this means that at least one giga. And now the trend is moving to 2.5 and 5 gigabytes. Gigabits, sorry. The the zone is responsible to control a specific zone. It's not responsible to control a specific domain. So this means that on each zone, there are uh, multiple applications, heterogeneous applications, collected together, integrated together on a single microcontroller. So the microcontroller should be able to integrate multiple functionalities in one single unit. This will reduce the, cable, the, the cabling, and the, the cabling is more or less 1.5 kilometers less with this new architecture, and will reduce the number of ECU present in the car, usually by 30, 40, even to 50% less in terms of number of ECU, thanks to the integration. So this means that you can see on the left, the challenge for the microcontroller will be how to integrate heterogeneous application into a single microcontroller. What is, these are the challenges for the microcontroller. So there are distributed ECUs, and they will stay in one single microcontroller. From a software point of view, it's a big challenge because we have to enable protection, we have to make sure that there is a freedom of interference, and then we have to share in, into a safe manner the resources available on the microcontroller. From an hardware point of view, the integration will reduce the so-called bill of material because there will be only one single unit, of course, with more powerful, uh, one single unit, and then this single unit can integrate the multiple applications. So what are the requirements from a microcontroller point of view in order to address this challenge? So the first will be computation. So we need to have a top performance in terms of real time. Applications are real time. For example, traction inverter we saw at the beginning. The new trend for electrification is to, use the tra is to have a traction inverter or onboard charger. So this means that we need to have a real time application 
Safety, safety is, is an aspect very, very important in automotive. Safety is not only the safety for the, well, the, let's say the, the driver or the people inside the car, but safety means also the safety of the people outside of the car. So you can imagine that when you have the others and you have a pedestrian and then you can have a problem with the pedestrian if the car is not able to recognize. So safety means internal safety and external safety to the, to the car. Security, another important aspect is the security. Security, you know that today we can open our car by uh, the door of the car by using the mobile phone. So this means we need security. We need a way to exchange information in a secure manner. So the microcontroller should be equipped with a security element uh, which can bring this kind of features. Of course, this is very important that we, we for, for the security. This, the security is not only related to the, to the car itself, but it's also related to the application. So we have to make sure that, for example, the application cannot be copied. Or, or between quote, hackers cannot enter in the car and change the firmware on the car. So the security, is, this is another very important aspect. And this, for example, will, uh, will, uh, will, will, will be addressed by the um, so-called the secure boot, to make sure that when the microcontroller, the application is starting on a microcontroller, the, secu the, the firmware is genuine. So is, is, uh, this firmware has not be, been hacked by, by someone else, by someone, okay? Then, and this is the HSM, the, uh, the hardware safety, secure module, sorry. And uh, then, in terms of integration, we, we saw in the previous slide that the, multiple applications, heterogeneous applications, can be integrated on a single unit. So the microcontroller should be able to integrate, and then we can see here in the picture, to integrate multiple applications. How to make sure that this is safe, so that this should be, we should have freedom of interference, so the application should not be, uh, should share the resources into a safe manner, and should not have interference each other. Then this is performed by, uh, we will see, by hardware, support, so the hardware, the microcontroller, in this case, the Stellar family, is able to support hardware uh, isolation to protect each single application. And uh, then to share in a safe manner the resources of the microcontroller, resources means the core, the execution unit, the memory, the peripheral, to share in a, into a safe manner, then there is a, a new element which is called the hypervisor. Hypervisor is, is, hypervisor is a, let's say, an execution state of the microcontroller. In, in, in the hypervisor is able to control the multiple application running on a single microcontroller to make sure that there is no interference each other. And then the other important part is uh, efficient memory partitioning. So the memory is something that is very important inside the microcontroller. It's very important from an application point of view. Then we need to make sure that the memory is partitioned in the right way and protected in the right way. Inside the microcontroller, inside the microcontroller there is no, uh, um, let's say, no memory management unit. Usually the microcontroller has only memory protection unit. So then we need to split the resources, in this case the memory, into a safe manner, and the microcontroller provides support in order to make sure that there is no interference against each other in, in the microcontroller itself. Then another important aspect is the firmware update over the air. So how to perform the firmware update? So you can, ima you can, you can imagine, that you can think about the, mi the microcontroller or the car, uh, the car as a mobile phone on wheels. Then you it's possible to update the firmware, update the application, update the data. But today, when there is the update of the data, the car cannot be used by the driver. So with this family, with Stellar MCU, it's possible to perform the update of the firmware, the update of the application, when the car is used by the driver. So there is no, in some sense, no disruption in terms of, in terms of services when, when using the car. So, and then this can be, can be done. And it, well, the, the microcontroller provides a nice feature so that it is able to double the size of the non-volatile memory for a, sh for a short, let's say, short period of time, could be days or weeks, and then it's possible to perform the update while the application is, uh, the application is running and then the car can be used, is used by, by the driver, by the owner of the car. Then, well, I said that we need to integrate together multiple applications, heterogeneous applications, 
and then we need to have additional accelerators. So the, the, we need acceler specific accelerators, so additional co cores. Ethernet, we saw that the Ethernet, con the Ethernet backbone is the most important part for the, for the communication. Then we need to have an Ethernet switch. Mathematical acceleration, when we have an, an, uh, an algorithm to perform field-oriented co control to control the traction, needs mathematical operations, a trigonometric operation. And then there are some specialized uh, digital signal processing coprocessors. So these are available. We're still, uh, and the last, in order to increase the, the driving mile, uh, range, uh, efficient power management. So low power modes, and in this case we have two different low power modes, smart power mode and standby mode. So smart power mode means that there is a small, my, small core running in the microcontroller which can continue to control the minimal functions of the, of the ECU while the rest of the microcontroller has been switched off. And then there is the standby when everything is switched off and then we are effectively consuming a few micro -ampere. Okay, now the five points that I mentioned before, computation, integration, memory partitioning, accelerator and low power. How this has been addressed inside the Stellar MCU? So this is the block diagram of the Stellar MCU. Of the Stellar MCU. Uh, well, Stellar MCU is a family, so this means that inside the Stellar MCU there are different devices. This is the, 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 the top. And it's possible to, to see there are up to six core that can be can, up to four, 500 and 400 megahertz that can run and are used by the application. Most of them are in lockstep for safety, for safety reason. Uh, four of them are in lockstep. Uh, then there are accelerators on the, on the top right side. These accelerators are additional core, which can be programmed by the, by the customer, specialized for specific application. Also in this case, the, co the, the two Cortex-M4 are in lockstep. So again, safety is very important. Then there are analog, analog and timers. Well, this is another very important feature that we need. The security, as we discussed it. And then there are, in terms of system, there are some system modules used for uh, to support the execution of the application. Typical example is the DMA, the CRC, the watchdog. So these are the system modules. Uh, then connectivity is very important. Ethernet, uh, gig gig gigabit Ethernet, two, po two ports at minimum, switch, PCI Express. So these are all modules re for the connectivity, which are very, very important inside the, inside the, the, the microcontroller. Then the last is the memory. Uh, as I said before, this microcontroller does not use, non, the non-volatile memory is not flash technology, but is PCM technology, phase change memory. So in the phase change memory, it's possible to, to, to have by default to 20 megabytes, but when doing the OTA, it's possible to switch to 40 megabytes, to, to double the size of the memory for a short period of time. As I said before, it could be days, could be week, depending on temperature and various other aspects. But in this way, it's possible to perform the update of the firmware without stopping the car. Okay. And then for low power, uh, well, I said bef before, we have the smart power. The smart power, there is a dedicated core, which is on the, on the, again, on the left, on the right top side, it's called a DSPH, which is responsible to manage. To, well, it will be not switched off in the smart power and then can continue to run some application to make sure that the, the minimal functions are working from a microcontroller point of view. Then, how to integrate now the application? We, we started, I started to say, we have multiple applications, heterogeneous application, then we have to integrate on a single microcontroller, to integrate all together on a single microcontroller. How we can do it? Actually, on a multi-core microcontroller, it's possible to do it right, even now. Very simple. We just part it on, we partition the microcontroller into single uh, sub-microcontroller, let's call it this way. And then the protection must be performed by software. It's up to the software to take care that there is no freedom of interference. The added value of the Stellar family is the capability of a microcontroller to support partitioning in hardware, so the protection will be performed in hardware. By configuring the microcontroller at the beginning, at runtime, before starting the, the, the various application, it's possible to implement the um, isolation. And in this case, 
there, are, uh, there is an hardware protection and the application and the peripheral are partitioned and dedicated to each single application. The application will be protected by one module that is called the NOC firewall. NOC stands for network on chip. Then the NOC firewalls has the ability to make sure that the, the access from an application will not uh, address a resource that has not been assigned to the application. So there is a real freedom of interference implemented in hardware by just configuring it. Then the last is the virtualization. The virtualization means to how to share the resources inside the microcontroller into a safe manner. This is done by the virtualization. So it's possible to share the peripheral. It's possible to share each single peripheral between different applications into a safe manner, again, by configuring. Now, we saw three different elements, OK? These, three, these are used for the, for, the, for the virtualization. But which, which resources these three elements are protecting? Well, memory protection unit, well, this is responsible to protect the so-called local resources. NOC firewall is responsible to protect the system resources. And the peripheral bridge is responsible, it's just a name, the peripheral. Eh? You see that in the NOC firewall and peripheral bridge, there is a new element which is called the VMID, Virtual Machine Identification. So this is very important because each access to the resources will have associated a virtual machine ID and the NOC firewall can be configured to allow or to deny access to the resources based on the virtual machine ID. The virtual machine ID is, is, an, is, is a number at the end, configurable in software, but managed in hardware. Well, this is a typical example where these elements are present. You, you can see on the top the, uh, the, the, micro, the core, sorry, the execution unit. Each, uh, each core has an associated memory protection unit. There are two different memory protection units, exceptional level one, exceptional level two. And this is protected by the MPU. The MPU can protect the local resources. You see local RAM, local TCM, local non-volatile memory. While for system resources, well, this is a simplified diagram, of course. By system resources is the NOC firewall, which is protecting the access using the memory protection unit configuration and the virtual machine ID configuration. On the bottom right, there, are, there is the peripheral bridge, and all the peripherals are attached to the peripheral bridge, and in this case are protected by configuration using the virtual machine, virtual machine ID. Now I said virtual machine ID, but what is a virtual machine? So a virtual machine is an execution unit so in, that is able to isolate the resources and execute application. The application can be bare metal, can be with AutoSAR, or can be a real-time operating system, any generic. The virtual machine is isolated application with constrained resources. What does it mean this? A virtual machine can give direct access to the resources, and this is done directly to the other resources, or the virtual machine can go for shared resources, can go through the hypervisor services, and manage the, uh, the access to the physical resources. The hypervisor is, in this case, responsible to um, uh, give access or deny access to the resources, to share into a safe manner the resources from an application point of view. Well, the isolation is by hardware, as I said before, it's configurable. Then the hypervisor services are used for to sharing. The hypervisor has also another role. If we consider the core, the execution unit, the core is, is a resource which can also be shared between applications. So each application uh, an application can use the same core depending on uh, depending the, the, the usage of the, of, the, of the application. So in this case, we have four different ways we can see the hypervisor as a virtual machine manager. The first case is one single virtual machine for each core, quite easy. So in this case, there is a very, very simple. The second is you can have one virtual machine for running on two cores, or even three or four, up to six. In this, in this way means that the application which runs the virtual machine integrates uh, um, as, mm, so needs more computation in order to address the requirement of the application. Then the last, the number three is more than one virtual machine per core. So in this case, the virtual machine share the core. The virtual machines share the core. And the last is the dynamic loading of virtual machines. So in this case, as I said at the beginning, we have the secure boot. The secure boot is something that uh, is performed only at the beginning when you switch on the car. 
to check that the, 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 the firmware is, uh, is the right one. So then this can be performed by a virtual machine, which is loaded at the beginning, execute this virtual machine, performs the secure boot, verify the firmware, and then will not be used, and then can, pu can be uh, put aside. So this is the dynamic loading in this case, dynamic, in a, is an example of dynamic loading of virtual machine. Then, these are the challenges. So we started with this picture, distributed ECU and integrated ECU. These are the seven challenges that, from a microcontroller point of view, we should address in order to implement the virtualization and the integration into a safe manner and, I would like to say, also optimal manner. Why? Because there is the hardware, which is managing the, resource, the resources, secure hardware isolation, real time, we, we need to continue to maintain the real time aspect, and this is done by dedicated accelerators. Then we have to balance the, the loading, and this can be done thanks to the uh, distributed uh, CPU loading. The performance, again, multiple core. Freedom of, of interference, again, freedom of interference. Hardware isolation, there is an hardware configuration. So the goal here is to continue to use the, the, the to have that the virtualization should not impact the application. When writing an application, the, the developer should not consider the virtualization because they have, it's like they have a subset of the resources of the microcontroller available and they can use in a safe manner. It's up to the configuration of the microcontroller to make sure that there are no interference. Well, this is, this is, these are the, 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 the challenge. So we have five minutes, okay. We are more or less at the end. Well, these are the, con the conclusion, and then, of course, if there will be some, some questions. So multi-core is very important. We need to have an accelerator, dedicated core, flexible core that can be programmed, application core, of course. Uh, isolation, isolation in terms of safe sharing of resources. This is done by memory protection unit, knock firewall, and peripheral bridge. And, of course, virtualization, Hardware, in this case, hardware virtual machine ID. This is the hardware which supports the virtual machine ID, very important. And configurable. So this means that there is nothing configured by hardware. It's configurable by software. Configure the microcontroller, configure the isolation, and then the application can start. Okay, we have five minutes. Okay, I have done, so. Okay, so fine. Thank you very much. And, uh, we have five minutes for questions. I try to accelerate at the end in order to give you the opportunity to ask questions. Please, please, okay, she's coming with the microphone. Thank you for the great presentation. Uh, one question, where does the extra memory come from when you go from 20 megabyte to ah, 40 megabytes? Okay, uh, for each bit inside the memory, there are two cells. You have two cells for each bit. This is for safety reason. Then it's possible to switch to one cell per bit. It's like you have something like this, and you have two cells per bit, you see? Then you switch like this, and then you have one cell per bit, and then you double the number, uh, the size of the memory. In this case, of course, when you have one cell per bit, you need to make sure that the retention is maintained. This is the reason why I said that there is a specific amount of time, or you have to perform some uh, countermeasure from a software point of view, typically to do a refresh, okay? And uh, this is a typical, uh, typical approach. There are uh, several, uh, several aspects when, when doing OTA. For example, one, the OTA can be performed, uh, mm, well, the, you can get from on the car, well, the microcontroller has no external memory, okay? Well, you, you, can, have, you can have some MMC, and, but it does not have external memory. So it's possible to download on the central unit, if you remember the picture, on the central unit, the new firmware image, then this new firmware image will be sent to the microcontroller. The microcontroller will switch into, it's called the single-ended mode, so one cell per bit, and then perform the, the, when you switch to one cell per bit, you have two partitions, the direct and the complementary. The direct will continue to maintain the application. So this means that the, micro control, the application can continue to run. The complementary can be programmed with the new firmware. Then when finished to program, the software can perform some test using the new firmware. In case there will be issue, can roll back because the, the, the direct partition still continue to maintain the old, let's call it the old uh, um, firmware 
implementation. And then in, ca in case uh, uh, there will be issue, they can roll back. Or if there are no issue, they can switch copying the complementary to the direct and then going back from single-ended to uh, differen differential mode to cell per bit. So this kind, there are several strategies you can do during, uh, you can do, for example, a typical strategy which is very safe is when you switch off. At the key off, you switch off the car, and then the microcontroller can stay for a while, can be a few seconds, eh, in order to program. This, the PCM is very, very fast, and the PCM does not require arrays. That's very, that's very important. So, and it can be written by bit, per bit. So, uh, very similar to a RAM, it's very flexible. So this means that at key off, it's possible to switch off. Let's say one minute, even less, uh, uh, it's possible to do this copy of the complementary on the direct, and when you switch on again, you have the new. But the car will continue to be used. This is very important when doing the update. Your car, when doing the update, will remain your car. <laughs> no, not the car, okay, that's very important. Please, another question, if you have. Okay, we have just 20 seconds. Just, uh, you typically, I receive one question that is, uh, uh, what is the latency? Because we have all this. I can say that everything is done in hardware. So if you run with virtualization or without virtualization, in terms of execution time and latency, it is zero. The difference. Okay, that's very important. Okay, I have 30 seconds. If you have another question, otherwise, thank you very much, and thanks for uh, your time.